Okay, so that today we'll be talking about codes and also uh, persistent storage. So first off, codes, what are they? Well, codes are a solution to a very interesting problem, which I'm sure now by now you would have faced. And that is, and that, is that for the A's, uh, the texts are all in one line. It needs to be all in one line. And when it becomes too long, it becomes very hard to type or edit the text, okay? So the solution is to use codes and codes allow you to do three things. It allows you to write a multi-line text. It allows you to create special characters and also to make uh, text templates which we'll discuss uh, shortly, okay? So let's say, suppose we, we have this following text to use in an A, okay? It is full of HTML and you can see it's multiple lines, it's got special characters. And if you were to type it in one A line, it would be very long and to actually make changes and so on, to add buttons and so on, it would be very tough, okay? So how do we solve this? Well, the answer is to put everything into a code. So you can see the text is there and it's wrapped into these uh, Q open bracket and Q close bracket, and that is really the code. And the codes must be embedded into a Smojo word. In this case, I've called the word response number one. But of course, uh, in, in real life, you wouldn't use uh, this kind of generic names. You could call it something that's more meaningful, okay? Maybe uh, the, the, the name of the song. In, in this case, it's a song. So maybe it's the name of a song, okay, or something else. And this is how you use it. So once you've set up the code, you know, Smojo word, you can immediately use it by, uh, by calling the word in a smart context. Okay, so in the, I've got the A here. You can see the A is much shorter. It's not a long, okay? And I can reuse response one if I want to. Now, you uh, must declare the Smojo word before you use it in your A. And this is true for all, uh, all your Smojo words and everything else that we do. You must declare something in Smojo before you actually use it. Now, the codes are most useful to display things like HTML, which contains a lot of brackets and maybe semicolons and you know, double quotes and so on. Okay, the next part is that we can uh, use codes to create something called text templates. Uh, and this is most useful when you want to repeat uh, a certain pattern. Uh, like for example, like say putting on yes or no buttons onto your text or maybe putting into a table or something else. So you've probably faced this issue again and again, many, many times, okay, in more complicated chatbots. So how can we do this? So let, let me just maybe rephrase this a bit. So let's say we want to, uh, given a message, we want to actually put in a yes and no button at the bottom of the message, okay? How do we do that? You see here, uh, we've got a, a yes, no, smojo word. And just, just for your information, uh, smojo is always read from left to right and from top uh, to bottom. So in this case, the yes, no, smojo word requires a message, which is a, a piece of text, and it will return also a piece of text, which is indicated by the S, okay? So the, the stuff in purple or in, in, in what is pink is just comments. And so the yes, no, the first thing it does is to bind the message to a context variable. That's what the CTX bracket is, the one in blue, the first line in blue, it binds the message text to a variable, a context variable called MSG or message, okay? Then the third line creates two buttons, a yes button and a no button, and it binds these two to uh, two more context variables called yes and no. So all in all, we have got three uh, context variables. The first one is the message itself, and the other two are uh, the yes and no buttons. And finally, we want to use these three context variables into the code that we have. So you can see there's a bit of HTML uh, there and the message is put in between uh, the paragraph tags, uh, tags and there's a BR to create a new line. And then you've got the yes and no buttons uh, finally, okay? All right, so how do we use something like this? Well, very simple. Again, we have to use a smart context and we, we feed it some kind of message. In this case, there are two messages with two different templates. Did, you, did this chatbot help you with a message? Then you call yes, no, or you can say something else like, do you want to continue with the IDK situation? And you call yes, no as well. Okay, very simple to use. Okay, so let's, let's look at and, and see how can you, you know, uh, put this into code. So I'm going to put everything into a template called songs.m and 
uh, I need to include it obviously below the bad language dot m in main in main. And this is my songs dot m. So you can see here I've got a thing called Dylan. Then I a type called Dylan, sorry, and a, uh, and there are several things which map map which uh, map to the the type Dylan, uh, for Bob Dylan obviously the singer. And uh, instead of calling it response one, I call it uh, Dylan serve somebody. And that's a better name than response number one, okay? Because it tells you what it actually does. And I've got two uh, rules here, two templates, sorry. And the first one uh, matches for anyone called Dylan, uh, the, 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 the Dylan type. And it will say, here's a song by Bob Dylan. And then give the first stanza of the song, uh, you got to serve somebody. And the IDK will just, give you another message and then of course you again get uh, the, the, the Dylan song again. All right, so again, uh, the, the, the parts that are circle are just the smart contacts which call the, the word containing the code. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So when the person uh, types in something like Bach, for example, the IDK will be hit and it'll say, I don't know what singer, I, I don't know that singer, but here's a song by Bob Dylan. And then you've got the title and you've got the, the different standards for the song itself, okay? Now, this is where we want to uh, decorate or layer on other kinds of things using a uh, text template. And for this, I've created a new word called like. And like takes in the message of any kind and it also outputs another string, right? So here, I've uh, bound the message to MSG. And instead of yes and no buttons, I've called it like and don't like buttons. And I've called them like and dislike. Okay, so it's the same format. I've got the message at first, and then followed by two buttons on the bottom, like and dislike. Now, the way I've used this is that I still call the first, uh, I can still call the first, uh, what is it called? Uh, words, which is Dylan serve somebody but I can decorate or layer in the like uh, template over this, okay? And this makes it really easy to, to, uh, to fix. Let's say I wanna change uh, don't like to dislike. I just make one change and it's there all the time. And this is what it looks like, right? So you've got the, the basic text from the, from, the, um, from the template, which is here's a song by Bob Dylan. You also have got the text that's coming out of Dylan dash uh, serve somebody. And finally, you've got the bottom two buttons that come from the like text template. 